This is not family therapy. This is the Family Issues Panel. I miss you so much. Hi, everyone. Hello. What an amazing gathering. Well deserved. Well deserved. One of the best TV series of all times. I still keep hearing it. And most, most of the people worldwide, I work a lot in the other half, like Morocco or Jordan or Tunisia. They, get, they know me by 24. They're like, oh, you're on 24. <laughs> and I say, I, I hope I didn't scare you. And goes, yes, woman, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just look at our list to see. Our moderator is here, Carlo. Carlo's from Wiki24. Yeah. My source Hi, everybody. doing the podcast <laughs> because I reference it. Several, I, I, I check it more than I check IMDb right now. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? You having fun already? It's been a great day. It's been a really great day to see everybody. It's been fantastic. Carl Greg has been with us from the beginning. Greg, Greg has not moved. I yeah, moved. No, Greg's, Greg's up. He's got the, the best seats in the house. Has <laughs> anyone had a bathroom break? I mean, <laughs> no, he I hasn't. Out, it's 24. Out. It's like a season of 24. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Sarah, how are you, Sarah? You look lovely. Oh, so great God. To see you. I miss you. I just I know. such hardcore, just flashbacks and and just I've smiled all day just knowing that this was happening. You know that just uh, it it's just mind blowing how connected we all are and how special this this twenty four. You know, it's I, even calling it a franchise. It's not bigger. It's bigger than that. It's just yeah. and I guess you know I I agree. Um, what was just said that just you know people still come up to me and and say especially during the pandemic everyone's watching it you know like um i know harry connick jr it sounds like i'm name dropping and I'm, i am i'm just i'm name dropping him and his wife and his three daughters who they were like we didn't know you were on 24 <laughs> we've been re-watching it and they are such super fans they actually recreate scenes as a family oh, my God. oh wow and now they think i'm so cool not because of anything else i've done or because i you know i've got three great kids or you know or i'm a straight you know no mm -hmm. it's because i was on season two of 24 and um i don't know it's just sort of yeah same thing with airports people are still and it's like it just happened people are like so what's going on are you coming back and i was like i i i think it's i think it's over <laughs> it's not like in people's minds it's still, it's still, still so going. present still going. Yeah. Well, that, you know, actually, that, that's the interesting part because of streaming now. I mean, before a show used to go off the air, no one would. So, if you know, I have young people that I know that are, are younger than 20 years old that are watching the show now, and they don't know that we shot this 20 years ago. They're watching it on streaming like it's a new show, and you're like, no, that was a really long time ago. It, during, during this pandemic, it's actually a lot of people on Twitter and social media start asking, what show should I watch? What show should I watch? And... 24 is actually a constant that most people say, ah, oh, you should watch 24, this one, this one, this one. But 24 is frequently mentioned when, when people are recommending shows. Absolutely. You're right, 24 was way ahead. Yeah, definitely. Like into the future when it came out. <laughs> so today it, it, it looks more relative than ever before. It's really interesting that a show can live up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, Nicar, I'm, I'm, Nicar is with us. Yes. Hi, Sean. Welcome. So hey, what what is this panel? You. This is the most beautiful people on 24 <laughs> panel? Is that what this is? <laughs> Damn, this is the best looking screen I've seen all day. <laughs> no, no offense, Greg. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, don't just forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is our family issues. Family issues. Panel. issues. So we've got a couple more people that are gonna stop in, but you know, we're, we're going to stick to time and, uh, and, and I'm going to keep an eye to make sure that they get in the room okay, because uh, okay. that's the way the day is going. Just, just let well, me know, Ryan. I know Absolutely. Laura Harris is coming on because we emailed earlier. The Warner Sisters have emailed today and she's oh, okay. up. So, Laura, where are you? We okay. anticipate it'll be a better meeting than the last time we saw the Warner Sisters. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> no restraints. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. okay. Next you to get on. <laughs> she's, this is so like Laura, too, to... Be a little bit late. Anyway, we'll give her a minute, huh? I see. Oh, <laughs> hello. You said oh, her I name. I think she's there. Yeah. <laughs> you said her name. And there she is. is. Where is she? Why can't I see her? Laura Harris. 
Hello. Can anybody see me? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, it, I'm sorry. It's it's John is getting better and honest, better. On this one. It's getting even better. With good looking people. Nick, come on. So I'm gonna leave. Hey, Sheree. Sheree. I'll leave. I don't. I don't fit that bill, so I'm going to leave. But I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Carlo from Wiki okay. Twenty Four, and he'll take it from here. Take Enjoy. it away, Carlo. Okay. Where are our husbands? Thanks, Ryan, right, ladies. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, to, to everybody for being here. Like uh, Ryan said, my name is Carlo. I'm from Wiki24, an encyclopedic website that uh, is dedicated very, very uh, passionately to this show that has been uh, the joy of so many people for so long. And the topic that we're going to be talking today is family issues. You know, and from the start of this show, Family has always been central to everything. I think that everybody that has seen the show has noticed that from a chess game that you can see right uh, behind me, a chess game between father and daughter in season one, uh, a daughter that will soon be in need of a rescue, to a presidential family preparing for an important event in season eight, whose fate ends up in tragedy, not rescued, like we see uh, with the Hassans. Or a family wedding in season two with Laura and, and uh, Sarah, a family that's eventually broken by terrorism, to a family that's more or less bonded by terrorism in season four uh, with Chora and Nestor. I don't know if Nestor is gonna, gonna join us today, but, but we have that family that is uh, bonded by, by that. Uh, terrorism. So we're going to talk a, a bit about those family issues that might arise between those uh, families. And I'm going to start with, with oh, oh, okay, so sorry, we have, and we have Annie yeah. with us as well. Uh, Annie, oh, yeah, yeah, welcome. Annie just joined. Welcome, Annie. I've been here like in the, in the <laughs> abyss. <laughs> oh, Annie, where is she? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we, we, we have pretty much everybody. It's great. Able to either hear me or see me. My name is Nestor. Oh, I, we can see you. We, um, we can see your box, not your face. Your cam is not turned on, but we can see your your little box with your name. This is like this is your life. Start reading, yeah. Nestor. Nestor, my beloved. There is Mr. Navi. Welcome. Great, welcome, welcome. I think we're 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 fooled, and I think we, we have everybody here. So I'm going to introduce you all. Uh, we have um, from season two, we have Sarah Winter, and we have Laura Harris, who played the sisters Marie and Kate Warner. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Why can't I see Laura? How can I? Um. Oh, okay. Laura. I see hi. you. Hi, beautiful. I just want to cry. I. I, I just. <laughs> We have connected so much over the years, you know, different shows we've worked on and being single moms and, and yeah. um, I just love you so I'm going to cry. Yeah, I I, you. I, that, that's great. That, that's, that's normal. It's okay. Family's cry. It's okay. Yeah. Look how we started, you know, you were my yeah. little bad terrorist little sister. <laughs> um, uh, it's crazy. The Warner Sisters. The war you know. Oh my god. From I'm season so four. Oh, oh sorry. From season four, we had no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, just just gonna introduce you all and then I'm gonna let you all loose. Um from season four, we have Shora Agdashlo and we have Nestor Serrano, uh, who played the family the Aras, Navi and Dina Aras. Welcome, welcome you too. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And we have from season eight, we have uh, Nekar Sadegan and we have Nasnin Contractor. Welcome. Another family who played Dahlia and Kaila Hassan. Thank and you. we have the great Annie Wershing who played yeah. Renee Walker. One, I think one of the uh, fan favorites of the show, uh, uh, Renee is yeah. very, very much loved by, by lots of fans. And I'm obviously own, we have... I'm in my own little family by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Greg who's been here. Uh, Greg, you've For been hours. here all day, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we have John. Uh, John, it's a pleasure to, to, to chat with you too. I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, John! It, it, 
What's you up, can brother? jump in anytime. I mean, this is this is your party, like like Ryan was saying. So I, I have some questions, but I also want to let you all loose and 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 let you uh, talk and chat and, and have fun because that that's what this is about. Mm. But uh, like like I said, family was uh, a, a central part of this show from the beginning, right? And Laura, I, I want to start with Laura because Laura was part of a major jaw-dropping moment in this show. I think it's one of the best of the entire series. Uh, mm. What did you enjoy about defying the expectations of an audience? Oh, I mean, you just said it. It's just always just the best feeling in the world when you really just are the least likely to do anything. I mean, people just have like, they're not even on their radar, basically. And then you like just... I just almost did something really rude. You just like throw down. <laughs> you just show up. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was, I mean, it was a great gift. They gave me a great It's gift. funny to be the bad guy, right? Yeah. It's, it's just so much fun to just all of a sudden, yeah, t turn that way. And, and, and Sarah, when, when Kate, uh, I'm going with Sarah now, your sister, uh, your good sister, you're the bad sister. Uh, when Kate last saw her sister, she literally had a restraining order. Uh, do you think they might have worked things out? Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, we're blood. And... Wait, you had a restraining order against me? <laughs> yeah, did, did I? What the? Did you what? You didn't know. You're in prison. Not even in real life. But, That's um... so rude. That's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... um, uh, I... Um... Sorry, I'm just so I'm having such an overwhelming like I, I'm bleh, 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 bleh. I'm I'm trying to um, piece together my thoughts. Um, what was the question? It was uh, the last week, the last time we saw. Would we have worked it out? Yes, we would yeah. have worked it out. Ultimately, I love yeah. my you know Tara's sister, and she's still my sister. <laughs> and um, maybe can we go back to the wedding at some point? Can we? Can we just? I mean, we'll have to have a different uh, we, We're going to need to find a boyfriend because... Yeah, we never had a wedding. <laughs> and, the, um, the boyfriend is not available. The, the boyfriend's not available. Well, you know, maybe she met someone in prison. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to judge my sister. It's just, you know, we... Uh, um, uh, yeah, who knows? Annie Worshi, I'm so sorry. I'm so ADD. I'm such a fan of yours. And in so many Aww. other ways, my, one of my kids upstairs is going to freak the fuck out because you're on the Vampire Diaries and we are watching the Vampire Diaries and he's going to die when he <laughs> So sorry, that's just oh, like... Oh my gosh. Laura. Um, Laura, yes. <laughs> um, hi. Well, now she's close. Um, sorry. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, Laura, Laura, tell, tell everybody what it was like when you found out we were going to make you the villain, because we kept it a secret. She had no idea. We knew. I, mean, I, I was going to ask about that. Really, that's, that's great that you bring no it up. no idea. And, and the whole idea was that, obviously, she'll play the innocent right to the last second. Totally. And when she found out, I'll never forget her reaction. But you, you, tell, you tell the reaction when you found out. I, I like... I was in my I was in the, tra the my trailer which I, where we were given the scripts, you know, for the next day or the next week or whatever. And then, um, yeah, and I just tossed it. I was like, <gasps> you know, I just tossed it across the track. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, it was uh, like a visceral, physical, awesome. And, th and then we send her to the gun range. Exactly. <laughs> right I away, she wanted to like <laughs> practice being the bad guy. Right away, put a gun in her hand. That's right. They, you had to because I'd never touched one. I'm Canadian, you know. You know, I'd never touched one in my life, and I and I wept the first time it was in my hands. I mean, I wept like a right. child. Yes, I remember. Yeah. It was yeah. traumatic for us. Yeah, yeah. I just like tears streaming, and I was a horrible shot. And the and the guy and the guy training me was sort of analyzing me really well. And after a while, he's like, "Are you afraid to hit the target because you're?" <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anyone. And he was like, oh, you're going to hurt more people if you don't hit the target. <laughs> I was like, and then I started hitting the target. But <laughs> how, how do you, how do you yeah. as an actress, that, that's a great question from John, but how do you as an actress work out this left field twist? I mean, something that's come from that. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. And you were already acting in some way that obviously works to the show, to the surprise of the show, but as an actress, how do you adapt to those changes? I think I'm just like, in my soul, I'm a bad person. So it's just really easy <laughs> to quickly adapt to that kind of 
no, I, I don't um, I mean, this, the full range is available to us. So it's exciting just when you get the chance to like travel in all those directions, like it, hardly any adaptation is needed. It's just like, it's, um, it's just a gift. It's like, oh, great, I get to do that. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. I, I, lo I love it. And, and like I said, it, it's one of the best twists I've seen on, on the show. I mean, it blew my mind when, when she like, uh, the, the, the guy ends up shot and it's like, oh, okay, she's a bad guy. It's great. It, it, it was a great moment. Uh, let, let's, switch, let's switch to Shora. Uh, Shora, the allegiances and loyalties of Dina Aras are very clear. How did that affect your family dynamic on the show? Well, to be honest with you, that the show proved to me that the concept of uh, family in a traditional sense is from its early time till now has been remained the same. Man and his wife, children, values, family value systems, do's and don'ts, uh, hasn't changed at all. And uh, we're still bound with the same rules. Uh, as Jane Austen would put it, uh, it's universally accepted. And therefore, when we started working on it, I noticed that be, be a, being a terrorist, being a predator, being whoever you are, won't make a difference in running a household. Mm. And ah. what, what she did for me was this multi-layered character. The reason I, the main reason I joined 24 was not just because It was an amazing show, amazing cast and crew, and really it was number one, and I still think it is its an own genre. But the main reason was the fact that I could see all these multi-layered characters uh, at work, and I thought, I, 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 I may be able to do a good job on this one. And I realized that as a mother, as a wife, as a lover, as a believer, as a terrorist, uh, I, I'm still... Uh, obeying the same rules as my ancestors did in the old days. And no matter what, we, 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 we're living by it. And it's interesting, everybody, I, it had some backlash on me, especially from my own people. They weren't happy with me portraying this terrorist. And kept talking here and there and telling me that, that you're giving us a bad name. And obviously I argued with them. And, but What it taught me was, it doesn't make a difference who you are. If you're a wife, if you're the head of a household, then you're going to have to do your job no matter what. Years later, to my dismay, I found that found out that there was a family. Apparently, there, there were a couple of families that were captured. Because, and they, they've been living in the U.S. for generations. But then they were captured because they were spying on us for decades. So all of a sudden, the whole story of 24 became even more real to me that, yes, we're running a household here. We are, we are having a family here. And Nestor knows. I kept telling him, you're my beloved TV husband, Nestor. And, uh, <laughs> but, but still, you got to do what you have to do. There, there's always that protection, you know, uh, you're, whatever your ideals are, um, good or bad, but, but there's that sense of, I need to protect this and, and keep forward uh, to whatever your goal is. And to, to something that you mentioned, um, uh, I mean, 24 has, Jack Bauer has faced how many enemies and bad guys, I mean, he has faced uh, Chinese agents, he has faced uh, American oil businessmen, he has faced Russian agents, uh, African warlords. So I know that people tend to, to um, maybe single out your roles uh, as Middle Eastern uh, and kind of say like what, what you mentioned, uh, but How do you feel about that? Do you think it it's, uh, actually harms uh, or does more harm than good? No, I don't believe so. And uh, the fact is that, you know, every decade, every few decades, uh, we find a new villain. And usually these, remember, it, you, they used to be Uh, Vietnamese, Japanese, Russian, a lot of those we saw in James Bond movies. 
Now it's the Middle Eastern and it's a sort of a reflection of the reality in the uh, uh, mirror of the screen, uh, silver screen. So uh, my answer to those who told me that my role was such a stereotype and, and I, my answer to them was, there is no such a type that I could be the stereo of it. I created this character. Yeah. Therefore, uh, we were just speculating here, we're imagining, we're using our imagination here as to what will happen if a family uh, is into terrorism. What, what happens? Then what, what, what are the relationships like? Are they and you, you did a great job. You, you both did a great job. Uh, Nestor, the, the Navi have any qualities that you admired? So first of all, <clears throat> I'm celebrating my 66th birthday. I'm wow. in my car. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But my family is in a restaurant. And oh. so I'm in a car. So that's why I might look a little spooky and... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're sorry. Did you no, just pretend you okay. went into the that's washroom okay. I'm and happy now to you're taking time out? John, what's up, baby? Hey, Esther. Oh, I love you. The most dramatic baby. lighting yet on this <laughs> pad, on any panel we've had. <laughs> and and you're in a car. It's so 24. <laughs> <laughs> we need some on the screen phone. shots, like five, six. My wife in the car. My husband's <laughs> in the. Right. And I'm having sex with another guy. What? But anyway, so um, with relationship, it, 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 as it relates to your question, which was what again? Uh, did Navi have <laughs> any qualities that you admired? Well, you know, I mean, I, I, I really did admire the fact that he was loyal, loyal to what he was, you know, his aims and his goals. Uh, unfortunately, I don't agree with his aims and goals, but I do admire his um, his uh, uh, his um, feelings and uh, and and uh, and goals for his goals. So, what I'm trying to say is, you know, we all have to kind of try to figure out what we're doing in life and we try to figure out what it is that our for example my kid who just got vaccinated today by the way boom my five uh, nine-year-old but um you know those are the kind of things that you you achieve and unfortunately you know navia raz and the family sheree i love you baby <laughs> but um but, you know, you have to have a set of goals that you try to achieve for your children. And that's what I try really hard to do every single day. And that's my goal. And I, you know, if I had to try to find something for Navi to admire, it would be that. Yeah. Bad goals. But no, sir, were... I have to say, this. no go, matter go. how rough and tough, no matter how rough and tough, my husband, Mr. Aras, is or was, but he was a gentleman. And I oh, oh, there, so there you go. There you go. I want to make sure. out with you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What do you think happened to Beruz? Beruz is now um, a PhD graduate in real life. But uh, uh, in, in the series, uh, it's really a question for the future. When we start making 24 again, which everybody is asking me, are they going to make it again? Are they going to make a movie? On is this going to happen? And, uh, like, I, I, don't, I really don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to, to, to Nekar and, and Nasnin. Uh, Nekar, your, your character rises to power and takes her rightful place as a leader throughout the day. What kind of a leader do you imagine that she was after that day? 
Oh, I think she was uh, probably if, if, you know, we ever got to see that character lead, I think she would have been an incredibly dutiful, hardworking, um, just wonderful leader. I, the way that uh, I created the character and the way that the writers watched and um, allowed the character to grow was so idealistic and in every way from such a, um, you know, uh, like a pedigreed background. And um, I got to work with uh, Anil and Nazneen who were um, so easy to see, you know, in that world uh, with me. So yeah, I think that the, the character was set up for, for wonderful beloved leadership. <laughs> you know. I think one of the things that, that your character showed beautifully was that resolve in the middle of a tragedy uh, of that twist to have uh, an Ailes character dead, um, mm -hmm. who, which is actually one of the greatest twists also that moment when, when we find out that an Ailes is dead. Um, but, but you can see that resolve on her, that strength in the middle of the tragedy. And, and it's great. I love that. Uh, what was your favorite fan reaction to your character? Fan reaction? Um, yeah. You know, let me say, I wish that Anil was here. I know, um, me too. So, right? It's so really great <laughs> to see everybody. And it is yeah. overwhelming and, and awesome because everybody's storylines in this show were just, it's crazy to see everybody all together because you know how the storylines were so separate, even within our own storylines. But I would have loved to have seen Anil here. Um, yeah, And as Neil and I together, we have so many memories God. of just working with oh, Anil yeah. and Kiefer and Anil and Kiefer. <laughs> and then we're here. But my favorite fan <laughs> reactions were in India, actually. Um, the way that uh, I had traveled to India um, for a friend's wedding and I saw Anil when I was there. And um, he was so lovely and he, he gave us a tour through Bollywood and it was wonderful. But the way that... Um, They, they loved the show internationally and um, kind of, I guess, in terms of representation in a way, um, those were my favorite fan reactions because they believed us, you know, so, so strongly. But there's so many fan reactions. A lot of people think I'm Nazneen, actually, when they see me. <laughs> yeah, that's actually an interesting thing because you played mother and daughter and yet you're only like four years uh, separated, right? Not even. Like not Wait, even. I want to say, I want to say that I actually have the privilege of saying on this panel that the two women on this panel that are way too young to be my mother have been my mother. <laughs> Nakar on 24 and Shore on The Expanse. <laughs> this is like mommy's day for me. <laughs> TV mommy's day I right know. now. <laughs> and like, <laughs> what? And two amazing powerhouses, you know? I mean, Nakar and I, for me, I don't know what question you're gonna ask me, but I've like three you, things. You were next, you were next. <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. I landed in LA from Canada and I was here for like five months auditioning and I didn't, and I sort of did pilot season. It was so hard, I didn't do anything. And then I you know, there's so many Canadians on 24 and Mylon Chaloff um, invited Carlo Rota, who's my real life husband who played Morris on the show, um, out to dinner at Teroni, which is a famous Italian Canadian restaurant in Los Angeles. And literally we go out for dinner and, and I didn't even know he was directing 24. Mylon directed 10 episodes of our season. And then I get a call the next day from my manager being like, you have an audition for 24. And I was like, oh, wow. And it was the first job I booked in LA. And it was the best job because I was a huge fan of the show. Um, I got to meet Nakar. I got to work with Anil and Nakar and I are still friends. Like we were- We became fast friends. Fast, we fast friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And by the time we were on the show, like you can agree, it was like, and, and Annie too, it was like a well-oiled. Right. Machine. Like we never, like, it was like walking on like the most like familial yet professional set mm -hmm. ever. And yes, we were so segregated. Like I think briefly I crossed over to Annie's uh, storyline or like sometimes going to see to you and see Mary Lynn, but you know, so every now and then you see, but otherwise we would shoot like, we also had the best schedule. We'd shoot like four days a month and do like, like or like five days a month and do like four episodes or something like that. Like it was, it was insane. Um, but yeah, that was, it was the biggest gift and it opened so many doors. And I would say, especially internationally, anywhere I go, whether I'm in 
France, in India, you know, in Morocco, Shore, like that is the place I get recognized the most from. Like they'll recognize Carlo and then they'll look at me and they'll be like, wait, weren't you on 24 together? What are you guys doing together? (laughs) (laughs) Morocco, my God. I was at Soupy in Morocco, Marrakesh. And I was trying to get into the hotel and the guy in foolish to say the traditional dress shouts, here comes a terrorist. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, everybody froze. They were like, <gasps> and I'm like, shush, man. He goes, I know you, you're on 24, 24. Yes. <laughs> in the Vatican, that was the best one. Carlo and I were in the Vatican, and all we hear is, all of a sudden we hear, 24, 24, 24. <laughs> be careful, be careful. She's a traitor. <laughs> so now I would like to say something. So I, okay. I, I was on the, uh, first day of shooting um, 24, right? And so it's the first day, I think, of the of your season. Did you hear me? Yeah, but you can't see. Yeah, well, you're, coming, you're covering the camera. You see your thumb. Oh, oh you see my thumb. Okay. Um, it's okay. the first day that I'm shooting on 24 and uh, John Kasser says to me, literally just before the first shot, he says to me, this is this, this TV shoot is going to change your life. And I thought to myself, you know, that's what people do. That's what they say. Nobody does a TV show that hopes it's going to flop. And so that's his baby, John Kazar, you know, said it, he, you know, designed it, it's his baby. And of course, that's what he's going to say. I've never seen the show, had never been on the show, had nothing to do with the show. And I was just a hired gun. So I'm in and it was about probably about maybe six episodes in that I decided, okay, Maybe I should watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty irresponsible as an actor. But yeah, that's what I did. So I went over to production and I said, hey, can you guys give me um, like this first season so I can get an idea? And they said, all right, we'll give you three seasons. And so my wife and I started watching the show. <clears throat> The only reason that we would stop watching, binge watching, was to go to the bathroom. That's it. If you wanted to eat, you're on your own. Going to the bathroom is the only reason. And we were so fucking hooked on this thing. I think that's the reaction uh, of everybody. And so when when John Kassar said to me, this is going to change your life, I had no idea. It literally, I was the mayor of New York City. I'd walk <laughs> through New York City and everybody was like, oh my God, you're the guy. Oh my God, you're the guy. Oh my God, you're the guy. I had never had such a reaction as I did after 24. And John was right. And I'll, ne- I'll never forget when I told him that. He gave me that like, yeah, sure, whatever, buddy. <laughs> Turned around. But I must say, he was nice enough to come back and tell me that story. To say, yeah. oh, you, know, you yes. told me I, I didn't believe you, but God damn it, you were right. <laughs> so I got to give him that. It changed what? my life, man. To, literally. To, to, something, to something that Nasdeen mentioned and, and ties with this. And it, it's something, as part of Wiki24, I've interviewed a couple of people from the cast and crew uh, of the show. And if there's one constant that people have said uh, to me, uh, pretty much every time I, I talk with someone or I, or I exchange emails with someone, is the camaraderie and the familial sense uh, on set on the show. Uh, and I think that's something that pretty much everybody from assistant director Nicole Burke to, to people like um, uh, Reed Diamond, who was on season eight, uh, pretty much everybody across, uh, Leslie Hope said that to me as well, pretty much everybody. And I think that says a lot about the people that are involved uh, from top to bottom. I have to say something. I'm sorry, um, because I'm going to forget it and, and get emotional. But um, Sy- uh, Francesco Quinn um, yeah. played Sayed Ali on Sayed Ali. And uh, he became a great friend of mine. And he's a uh, then wife, Julie, who's also Australian. And um, 
he uh, sadly passed away. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah you know, several years ago. And, but he gave me this necklace, um, speaking of family, it's um, when I was trying to have my first baby, his brother is a very famous um, sculptor, one of the most famous sculptors in the world, Lorenzo Quinn. And um, it's the hands holding a little baby. And wow. I just, um, I'm really Aww. missing, I'm really missing um, Francesca right now. That's and, amazing. Uh, and it really, it speaks to everyone's, you know, um, what we're all saying and sharing about, um, what family means and and what it uh, how it how it can transcend you know a TV show or a role or or uh, you know um, yeah anyway I just um, I just wanted to say that before I no no it, it, ADD it's... kicked in again and I <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to go I want to go to Annie uh, quickly um, Annie you you came um, on season seven and like I said uh, earlier. You were a fan favorite. I think I'm pretty sure that's why they brought you back. Uh, and they said, no, we, we need, we got to have her on, on season eight. And, and uh, there are a few times that we saw Jack truly happy. And one was when you reunited, when you were uh, back together. Why do you think that Renee resonates with so many fans? Um, well, I think, I think they got to see her, uh, the arc and the journey that she went on and she sort of slowly became somewhat of a female Jack Bauer and we know how much everybody loves Jack Bauer so <laughs> just the fact that there was somebody else that was out there uh kind of taking on his his willingness to do anything that that need, that he needed to do um in the moment and she sort of adapted uh that mindset um Uh, against her will to begin with, but then, <laughs> but then she saw that his ways were uh, worked most of the time, um, and so I think that was the the biggest thing. You know, it was a it was a a female Jack kicking butt, and I think fans really liked that to begin with. Yeah, definitely, and I think that most people responded pretty pretty well to that. And they were sad to to see you to see you go. Uh, it was a sad moment for Renee. I was so, a big fan of you, by the way. Yeah, she was Kikas, I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have uh, Greg. Are you here? I'm here. Okay, uh, I didn't have. Uh, you weren't supposed to be here, but you're here. <laughs> I'm here. But but your your family is another key part of this show. So I wanna. I definitely want to get your insight. Uh, about what it means to play uh, a husband, uh, other, other than a president, a husband. And what do you think about how the family dynamic between, between uh, Greg and, and, and Jean uh, unfolded? What do you think about that? Uh, well, I made up a story that that helped our backstory that uh, we had a son and uh, he died and I, I blamed her. And uh, as she melted or came apart, I had less and less empathy for her and uh, sympathy for her plight. And I had, I sort of had to, to play the guy I played and uh, Jean fed right into that. She didn't, didn't, it worked out really well. That's what I put it that way. That, that's an amazing, I didn't know that. So that, that's an amazing story. It's great. No, I mean, nobody knew it except she no. and I. Oh, so uh, that's <laughs> prime, prime time. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's great to know. Uh, to, to you all, to everybody, what lessons do you carry from being involved with 24? Can I just say, since you just spoke with Greg, I, Greg, it's so good to see you. I'm Thank a huge you. fan of Greg. Uh, um, I don't know this. if you remember this, but I used to watch Greg's scenes often, often. For some reason, when I was scheduled to work, Greg would have a scene just before mine. And so if I could get done in hair and makeup quick enough, which I always was because they'd always bring me in way too early, then I'd go and I'd run to catch Greg's scenes. And to this day, I think about you, Greg, when I'm doing scenes from time to time, because every take was so different. 
And I remember a, a time Howard Gordon and I, one of you know the producers and I were sitting behind the camera and watching and we were just tickled. I was particularly just so tickled. The scene was not funny. It was a very intense, serious scene, but just the, the intricate ways that Greg would play every take. I don't remember what the scene was, but Greg was just walking to the door to shut the door in this scene, Greg, you were, and you were walking out of the office and you went and you shut the door and I don't know, Mylon Chalov was directing and the way he would just go behind the door, sometimes peeking in, sometimes slamming it, sometimes, I mean, it was just like a lesson in acting. It was just so wonderful to watch you work, Greg. I just, I think about it still and I'm, you know, just that show, I think, too, there was so much to work with, 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 with the writer, what writers were building and stuff, but I just loved it. So I take a lot of stuff still that I think about. Thank you very much. I'm your thank fan. Thank you, Mr. Kassar. What's that? I saw Kassar's face. I just had to thank him again. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I just, I, it's true. I'm Craig, a fan. You were, you were honestly absolutely terrific, but I'd like to add that you know, I, I've seen shows as a viewer, and uh, I think, my God, how is it possible that there could be, for example, in The Sopranos, yeah. many people that I know that have been on that show who I wonder how they ended up being so terrific in the show. And you have to say to yourself, well, Okay, all right. So these are guys that I know in Sopranos. I know 90% of those guys. How did they end up being such terrific actors in that show? And you have to wonder, it's got to be the writing mm -hmm. and the directing. And the editing. It's as simple as that. <laughs> and I, I have a question. Yeah. Am I on? Okay. I have a question for Annie. Yeah. Um, we're team Renee at our house and uh, <laughs> we've always been, it's just the way it is. That's the way it is here. Uh, and uh, we're, we're fans and we, we enjoy uh, you know, seeing all the interplay, but how did you get the role? How did you, how did you wind up as Renee? Well, I had done a pilot with John and Joel uh, uh, that was also a Fox pilot. Um, and so we didn't get picked up and then um, you know, which was a bummer at the time, but then I was like, well, maybe I could at least, you know, I met those guys, maybe I could at least audition for a guest star in 24 next year, you know, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And then, uh, the audition came in for Renee and it was all very fast and back and forth. And I, uh, I was supposed to like chemistry test with Kiefer and then that got canceled. And, the, you know, it was all just kind of like, I feel like it, I feel like I auditioned on a Friday you know, went in a couple more times and was like working by Tuesday. I had like weapon training and then was working by Tuesday or something totally insane. But I know that, you know, working with Kassar um, was like, <laughs> um, come on. <laughs> yeah. We didn't hear Eddie, we lost you. We lost you. <laughs> working with Kassar to froze. Oh, no, I, didn't. I think there I am. I was just tearing up. It was my actual frozen <laughs> self. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that having worked with Kassar on the previous pilot, um, I think he championed for me um, Big time. quite a bit. Um, so that was huge. Well, she, she was, I just, I'll never forget, and you were just such a fine on that show. And I just, you blew me away on that show. And I remember, that, you know, we were going to give Jack Bauer a female partner. This is, this was not an easy casting choice. Because yeah. we knew right away, she would have to be able to go toe to toe with him. And yeah. not only Jack Bauer, Kiefer Sutherland. It was like <laughs> yeah. the combination of both, <laughs> you know, and, and Kiefer never suffered let's say not great actors well. And so, you know, he was part of the process. If I gave you the list of names, it would blow you away, the names that were coming up to play this part. Hmm. And I was that little voice kept going, any, any, any. And all these <laughs> names would come up and I go, no, any, any. And I swear to God, and again, they could say it or not. Half the producers were still like, yeah, no. 
yeah. I don't know. And even Keeper <laughs> had a little bit of like, eh, I don't know. But this is the best part, is that the very first scene we did with, I don't know if you remember this, it was you talking and he just sat there for the whole scene. And you had like six pages of what happened to Tony Almeida. Yes. And he was just going and going and going and going. And we did two takes. So he goes, Kassar, can I talk to you? And I thought, oh my gosh, here, here we go. And he said, she's great. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> I know yeah. she's great. I, I know that was a big deal, like uh, in, in making sure I didn't die right away in episode two, was that I feel yeah. like I won her over early on in the beginning. So I at least got to live two seasons. <laughs> yep. Daddy was great with the action too. Daddy, you were great with the action too. Oh, I loved like, it. Yeah. It was the perfect combo. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got, I've got to say to all of you, um, we talk about this all the time. There's so much TV. There's so many films out there to try to keep up with it. It's, it's impossible. But we use 24 as our guide because we say, oh, Greg Itson's in that. So we're going to check it out. Or, or Sarah's in it. We're going to check it out. Annie's doing it. Laura's, you know, we, we, we do those things. Uh, uh, because it, it, it gives us a credibility, right? When you're sorting through what's worth watching and what's not, we look for 24 actors uh, to be a part of it. And fortunately, you're all out there all over the place, which is fantastic. So we appreciate you uh, doing that and staying out there and being a part of today, for sure. And I'll, you know, Carlo, you want to wrap it up? If it's, if yeah, it's sure, Lynn. No, uh, I, I just have one last question and I want to finish with this. Where is the strangest place you've been recognized for your 24 character? Strangest place. That's a great question. Hmm. Can I just say, because this is about family, just for a second, people always pitted me against like, you replaced Leslie Hope and, and someone else replaced you and Annie. And, and I'm like, no, no one replaced anyone. We're no. a sisterhood of amazing women that got That's to right. be part of this show <laughs> yeah. that is like connects us all. Yeah. And like, I just, it's so funny when people say that, like, because Leslie Hope was one of the most beloved characters and, and actresses, and it was intimidating. And then, um, I don't know, it's just this weird thing. And I, and I just wanted to say, like, because this is family panel, like, I love my my sister Annie. I've never met you, but I love you. I'm such a fan of your body. Oh, we've met. Do we hair. I love your hair too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, though, there is there is one last question. There is last, one last hair, thing John. we should talk about, and I think it's really important. And and you know, 24 was sometimes called an action show, which always pissed me off because it never was, mm -hmm. and it was this mm -hmm. macho show. But I'd love if every one of you can just kind of to just kind of weigh in on the fact that I think we had some of the strongest women on television. Without a doubt, yes. in a time period when there weren't that many, we yeah. truly had strong female characters. And Absolutely. every single one of you played that, except you, Nestor. But the rest of you, <laughs> you're just so strong. And just weigh in on that and what, what, what that was like to be, you know, playing that part at that time, which, you know, again, there, there were some shows, obviously, but I just thought we were at the forefront of having strong female characters. Absolutely. Hey, John, especially you seeing me in heels, baby. Yeah. <laughs> John, like you, like John. Live another you, day, man. Live another like day. A, like a father right. figure to all of us. Like you were like a pop, Papa yeah, yes. 24 and very yeah. paternal. And thank you for that. Well, and also, especially on a show that I feel like could be considered as like a guy show, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So much action and. Mm -hmm. To have all of these strong female women was amazing. Yeah, it really yeah, was. Definitely. It really was. So my answer to that question would be: <laughs> I was in the bathroom taking a leak at the White Horse Tavern in the West Village, and some guy looked over to me, which is kind of like you know, not what you really do. And he's peeing, and I'm peeing, and he looks over to me, and he goes, "Oh my God, you're fucking." Navia Raz. And I go, uh, all right, can I finish being now? And, but but that was the weirdest place in which I was. Uh, That's oh, weird. my God. Sheree, I'm looking at you right now. I love that woman. The only woman that I know that has a deeper voice than I do. <laughs> we we love that voice. We love that voice. Thank you. Well, I, mean, I want to thank I want to thank everybody for 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 sharing your stories and and we're, we're gonna keep on talking so so just yeah. let loose and, and uh, keep close uh, your family so so uh, keep staying in touch you all and, and we love you everybody.